improving our gut health really has an impact on our overall well-being. Why are there so many ads for probiotics? My phone knew that I was struggling with my gut health before I did and was like sending me all these ads for probiotics. I don't know. It doesn't have to be expensive. You don't need to spend a lot of money. Looking forward to not feeling bloated all the time. I just thought it was normal that by the end of the day, your stomach was supposed to be bloated. And I think there's lots of videos out there that say this is normal. <laughs> this was the year that we got bombarded with content about gut health. I didn't really buy into this content. I kind of feel like things come and go and it's kind of just like a fad, but I learned very quickly just how important gut health is to my well-being. I think when a lot of us think about poor gut health, we're thinking about like bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhea. As soon as your digestion is off, you're thinking, oh, I don't have great gut health. Something I ate is not agreeing with my body. But really poor gut health can show up in different ways. It's low energy, nausea, irritability, acne, depression, holding on to belly fat. It can show up in loads of ways. My name is Angeline. If you're new here, thanks so much for joining me. If you've seen some of my videos before, welcome back to my channel. Now veering a little bit away from content that I'm normally post, I normally post content about wellness, fitness, self-care, reviews on fitness clothing. So this video is a little bit out of my wheelhouse, but I thought it was very important to come on here and discuss this. Listen, when I started this YouTube channel six months ago, I did not think I would be here talking about diarrhea. Now I'm in my late thirties. I've had two children and my body is constantly changing. Just kind of decided that what I was going through was a new normal for me especially after having children, everything with my digestion, my hormones just seemed different. I just accepted it for being normal after having kids. And I mean, we read all kinds of crap about cortisol and hormones and everything like that. So I was just like, okay, this is happening to me. Maybe it's perimenopause, things are changing. I'm having challenges with my digestion, with my skin, with my energy. And I was just kind of assuming this was all related to being in my late thirties. You know, cut to a few weeks ago when I just felt like everything I was eating was making me feel so nauseous. I was so tired all the time. I just didn't have the energy that I wanted to put into my work, into my kids. I decided to go for some routine blood work and talk to my doctor about how I was feeling. Honestly, it felt like I was in my first trimester of pregnancy, although I knew I wasn't pregnant. So I was just trying to determine if my iron was low, if my, low, if my blood pressure was too low, if there's something that I could be taking to help aid me because I honestly couldn't make it through my day without a nap. I couldn't make it through my meal without feeling Feeling nauseous and I did tell all this to my doctor now luckily I have a great doctor she was very supportive she listened to everything I had to say and she immediately sent me for some blood work including a screen for celiac and lo and behold my screen came back positive saying that there was a strong probability that I was celiac now this was total news to me never in my life have I ever avoided bread anything like that I'm pretty open with things in my diet I've never stood clear from eating any type of gluten now the blood work was just a screen and for those of you that are celiac you know in order to get a full diagnosis you actually have to get an endoscopy so I went to the hospital got an endoscopy and then it came back saying that I was celiac. So the obvious thing for me to do was to just cut out gluten completely. Because I have two toddlers, I continue to feed them gluten, although the doctor did recommend my whole house go gluten-free. I decided at this point it was too challenging for me. So coming up with new routines, new meal plans, calculating my macros, trying to make lifestyle changes to help improve my gut health, essentially. This all happened within the last three weeks. This is brand new, this is fresh. I would say I've been gluten-free now for five days and it is unbelievable the difference that I feel. I feel so incredibly different just in five days of eating gluten-free. I cannot believe what you put in your stomach impacts everything. Our gut is responsible for digesting our food and also absorbing all the nutrients from our food. And if you're eating gluten when you're celiac, your body actually can't absorb any nutrients from your food, which was causing my iron to be low, plus some other vitamin deficiencies, which was making me tired. So by eating gluten, I'm, I actually wasn't allowing my body to absorb any nutrients from my food, which is why I was so tired all the time. Something else I didn't actually know is that a majority of our immune cells are actually in our gut. So a healthy gut actually helps regulate your immune functions, protecting the body against infections, inflammation, and other diseases. Something else I was not expecting is that improving your gut health actually helped 
increase my mental clarity, my mood. I found that I was being a little bit short with my kids. I was very, very irritable. And just by eliminating something from my diet that my body couldn't handle, my mood increased, mental clarity increased, and I was able to be around my children without getting short with them. They even say that an imbalance of your gut bacteria can actually lead to depression, anxiety, and even neurological diseases. No, we've all heard it. The gut microbiome actually regulates the production of hormones, including those that are related to stress, appetite, sleep. So really a healthy gut can maintain an overall hormonal balance, which we all know is crucial for well-being. There's definitely other benefits that I was not expecting. Another one would be that I don't have huge bags under my eyes. If you've watched some of my past videos, I find when I watch the playback, I have huge bags under my eyes and you know, I don't never ever edit it out because my content, my video is as a mom of two kids trying to fit everything into her schedule. But just in the past few days, I've noticed that my skin is slightly clearer and plumper, but also I don't have the bags under my eyes. Now I will say that I am using some new skincare and I will tag my last video here. So that could obviously be affecting it as well. But I think it would take a lot more of using some type of skincare for the bags under my eyes to disappear. There are people in my family that are sensitive to certain foods. They aren't celiac, but they definitely have food sensitivities. And their doctors have recommended removing these from their diet to help clear up you know, their eczema, psoriasis, any type of rash that they might have, because this could all be related to imbalances in the gut. Improving my gut health has helped my mood, helped my sleep, helped my skin, helped my energy. And I'm looking forward to the other benefits as well, like a stronger immune system and helping with my hormonal changes as I get older. It's funny how things change in our life and we can assume that it's normal. I always assumed it was normal to feel, you know, very tired at the end of the day. I mean, I have two kids, I work really hard. You see all these posts about moms being exhausted at the end of the day. Yeah, that was 100% me. But my energy levels have skyrocketed. So what I was experiencing before was not normal. Now, if you're just starting out on your gut health journey, there's a few things I recommend you do. The first thing I would do is do some type of cleanse. I have never done a colonic before, but those are very popular. I used a supplement that actually flushed me out it um, was really great it's got great reviews online and this is not sponsored but i did that for a month and just removed all of the waste that is in my body and we hold a lot of waste in our body so i definitely recommend starting and going and doing that the second thing i'd recommend is to increase your water intake now you don't want to go overboard you don't want to be drinking way too much water because you could actually have an opposite effect here but upping your water intake drinking water when you're thirsty carrying your water bottle around I aim for about three liters a day on days that I'm working out. I know some people need more, some people need less. There's calculators online you can use to calculate how much water you should be drinking based on your body weight. And then I recommend you take a probiotic. And this is so funny because this video is not sponsored. And at the start of the video, I was talking about, you know, money grabs and trending things on social media now. There's lots of just regular probiotics you can take at the drugstore. It doesn't have to be these fancy ones where you're spending monies or subscriptions where they show up at your door. Take a probiotic to introduce good bacteria into your gut. I don't think we need to be going and spending lots of money for colonics and getting tested from a naturopath for food sensitivities like that stuff costs a lot of money I, there are ways that you can do it on your own not to knock that stuff if you have the money 100 percent, that's the easiest way to go about this keeping a food diary is a great way to start sure there's a little bit more work involved but it's free writing down exactly what you've eaten and then how you feel after do you feel energized or do you feel sluggish do you feel like you can use the washroom freely or are you struggling to go to the bathroom like these are things that you should be writing down and tracking and then you can start to see trends and patterns of what foods your body does agree with and what it doesn't agree with so there's lots of content out there there's lots of information out there on certain foods that really upset our stomachs but again, everybody is different. And I think you'll find pretty quickly what you're sensitive to. So what works for me isn't gonna work for you, isn't gonna work for her. So find what works for you, eliminate foods one by one, trying to figure out what it is you're sensitive to. But once you figure out what it is that's causing you to have acne or to feel bloated or fatigued or constipated, I guarantee you'll never go back to eating that just based on the improvements that your body will naturally make when you're not introducing these into your digestive system. Now I'm still trying to navigate this. I have had challenges in the last couple of days of being gluten-free, eating out, ordering in, 
going out with my kids, it's very challenging. I'm mourning all the losses of the food that I can no longer eat. Now that I've seen all the benefits, I 100% am going to stick to eating gluten-free. Now for me, I'm celiac, so I actually have an allergy to gluten, but if you're experiencing any issues, I would go in and check your diet. I would check your gut health because I can now see the impact that poor gut health makes on your body. Well, there you have it. I'm still trying to navigate the changes that I need to make to my diet and gut health and I'm here to support you in your journey as well. If you are celiac and have any tips for me, please comment down below. Like I said, this is all information I've received within the last week, so it is brand new to me. I am still trying to absorb it and I'm still mourning the loss of all of the treats that I am no longer gonna be able to eat. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please put them down in the comments below. I am so happy that you're able to join me on this journey and I'm so appreciative of you being here today. I hope you all have a wonderful day and bye for now.